This is Colin O'Keefe here with Monday's episode of LXPN TV. The much discussed Eagle v. Edcom suit deciding whether an employee or his or her employer owns a LinkedIn account recently came to a close. Joining me to discuss what happened and some potential lessons is Daniel Schwartz of Pullman and Conley and the excellent Connecticut Employment Law Blog. Dan, first, the employee did come out ahead in this with the court saying the employer was wrong to seize the LinkedIn account, but you wrote on the fact that this is something of a hollow victory. Why is that? Well, you know, for the non-lawyers out there, there are really two aspects of a case. One is liability, showing that the other side was wrong. The second is damages. Here, the employee showed, yes, the employer did something wrong, violated the uh, uh, LinkedIn account of this person. They took the passwords that were there. But, you know, the court said that wasn't enough. The employee still had to show that they were damaged. And in this case, the employee was trying to come up with some theory that uh, the business wasn't there and uh, the number of hits that maybe uh, weren't uh, being looked at her site. The court said that wasn't enough. You need to show some type of lost business, some, some loss. And the employee couldn't. They couldn't show one client that didn't go to her because of that. So, uh, you know, it ends up being... Uh, a victory on paper, but uh, not where it counts, uh, at least in, in the view of many employees. And second, are there lessons here for employers? Could they potentially set things up so that they do own their employees' LinkedIn accounts? And even should they? Well, I think you've hit on the, the, the bigger question, which is, should they? Uh, I, I think LinkedIn is a commercial venture. Uh, one of the interesting aspects to this case, which uh, wasn't decided in this latest part, but had been decided early on, is the employer tried to say that the employee's connections, uh, you know, on, on Facebook we call them friends, on, on Twitter you call them followers, on, on LinkedIn they're connections. Uh, the employer tried to argue those connections were trade secrets, were private, because a lot of the times they were customers. And the court said, no, you know, you've allowed your employee on LinkedIn, they're using it, those connections are public. So one of the big questions, I think, for the employers to ask is, should we really be having employees on this? Uh, and what restrictions are we going to place? Because once you let the cat out of the bag, or the genie out of the bottle, whichever metaphor you like, it's impossible to put it back in. Uh, and so for employers, thinking about your strategy before you have these problems uh, and coming up with an approach that fits your particular company uh, and your employees uh, is, is really going to be the best, uh, best approach. Absolutely. This certainly isn't the last case that we'll see from the intersection of social media and employment law. So this will be an area that's interesting to keep an eye on in the future. Again, that was Daniel Schwartz of Pullman and Conley. For more of his insight, be sure to visit ctemploymentlawblog.com. And for commentary on this case from the entirety of the LexBlog Network, visit us at lxbn.com, where we actually have a section dedicated to just this case. So come to lxbn.com, search for Eagle v. Edcom, and then click on that tag. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thank you, Colin.